Welcome to the second video in the Stream Features series. This is the second video of two. I'm Aida Awad from Broward College. The learning targets for this video include describing the major features produced by stream erosion, describing the types of stream valleys and how they change over time, and discussing the different types of drainage patterns. Stream features all begin with the discussion of erosion and abrasion. Erosion occurs when rock materials are worn away by the grinding and chipping action of stream water and of sediment grains that are being transported along with the flow in the stream. Abrasion is responsible for those erosional features that we see along stream valleys such as cut banks and meanders. And meanders are dominant in areas where the stream has a low gradient and where ex extensive floodplains have formed. In the picture here on the left side, we can see a map view of a stream. And we see the areas where the velocity is at a maximum and at a minimum relative to a meander. So in our first little meander here, we see on the outside edge of that meander that a cut bank has formed. And on the inside, we see deposition. So on the outside of the meander, the velocity is high. On the inside, it's lower. And the same thing with the subsequent meander downstream. So we have three cross-sectional profiles to look at the velocity. From A to A prime going across, just at the start of this cut bank, we see that the maximum velocity is up against the cut bank and would encourage erosion in that area. Going across a straighter part of the stream where the velocity is at a maximum in the center of the stream, from B to B prime, we see the velocity profile. And again, the velocity is a maximum just in the center of the stream below the surface where there's no frictional forces acting on that water to slow it down. So moving on to talk about cut banks specifically. Cut banks form on the outside of meanders. They form there because that's where the stream velocity and thus the erosion is greatest. And you can see in the cartoon up on top, the formation of that cut bank and on the inside, deposition, and then on the subsequent meander, formation of another cut bank on the outside. And down below, you see a picture of a cut bank that's threatening to take this house with it as erosion continues to occur. Opposite cases with point bar formation. Point bars are deposits on the inside of a meander where the velocity is reduced. So again, we see deposition of a point bar on the inside, which increases the meander itself. So the erosion on the outside of the meander increases the size of the meander in that direction, and the deposition on the inside on the point bar is increasing that meander, that curve in the stream. And in the, the aerial photo, you can see the point bar being deposited and the cut bank. And in the photo on the right, you can see an actual sediment deposit point bar. Floodplains are large, wide, flat areas of land that are adjacent to the stream channel and roughly parallel the stream channel. They form in areas where the stream has a low gradient and they are inundated by water during floods. Sediments in a floodplain tend to be fine-grained sediments. We have several other types of stream features that typically form on floodplains, which we'll talk about in upcoming slides. In this picture, you can see an aerial photo of a stream that is flooded and the water is overlapping onto the floodplain. And in the picture below, you can see the stream channel itself and then the arrow indicating the width of the floodplain in that region. One of my favorite terms in all of the geosciences is the Yazoo tributary. The Yazoo tributary is a small stream that forms running parallel to the main stream channel right on top of the floodplain of that mainstream channel. So we can see the Yazoo tributary here in this little cartoon running along the floodplain and parallel to the main channel of the stream. And in the picture below, if you look for this very curvy channel here, this very sinuous stream channel, notice that it is running parallel to the mainstream channel and on the floodplain. That would be a Yazoo tributary. And if you're looking for other ones, there are also a couple of other ones over here on the east side. So we've talked some about streams meandering, curving, and how those meanders are enlarged through erosion. 
And the next feature that we're going to talk about is an oxbow lake. An oxbow lake is a meander that is cut off from the main stream channel. And one of the interesting things about oxbow lakes is that the gradient of the stream increases after the oxbow lake is formed because the length of the stream channel itself is actually reduced by the formation of that oxbow lake. So here we have uh, in the top picture a beautiful picture of some meanders in a stream. And in the bottom two pictures, we can see a very broadly meandering stream with oxbow lakes, those U-shaped lakes, uh, off to the side. In the next slide, we're going to look at how oxbow lakes are actually formed. So we have four panels here. The first panel is a young stream. It's fairly straight. And we start to see a cut bank forming and the meander itself starting to form and a point bar starting to develop on the inside of that meander. As the meander continues to grow through increased erosion, we see that the stream starts to become more sinuous. In fact, it becomes so curvy, so meandering, that in a case where there's a lot of flow in the stream, the flow will cut off the meander and then continue to flow down this new straighter channel. The cut off meander in this case is the Oxbow Lake. So there you have the formation of an oxbow lake. Stream deposits also include deltas, and deltas form as fan-shaped sediment deposits at the end or at the mouth of a stream where the stream deposits its sediment load into another body of water. So this could be a tributary stream flowing into a larger distributary stream and forming a delta at its mouth. It could be a large stream like the Mississippi shown here on the bottom picture or the Nile shown in the top picture that forms a large delta when the stream flows into a major body of water. The deposit occurs because of the reduced velocity of flow and deltas end up being graded. So closer to the shoreline, you have the coarser materials and further out into the open water, the finer materials finally settle out. Just like a delta, we have an alluvial fan. However, an alluvial fan is a deposit that is on the surface. These are typically formed in mountainous regions where a stream is flowing through a mountainous region and it suddenly comes to a flatter area. So the slope is reduced, the gradient is dramatically reduced, and that causes a lot of sediment to be deposited. Just like in deltas, the sediment deposits are graded from coarse up close to the mountains to much finer with distance from the mountain. Levees. Levees are both natural or they are man-made. And levees are elevated regions that run parallel to a stream channel along a floodplain. They help protect against flooding. And you will note that in this picture, which is a picture of a man-made levee, that the water level in the stream, which is shown on the top left corner of this picture, the water level there is actually higher than the land surrounding it. So if the levee wasn't there, this entire area would be inundated, would be flooded. Here we have some pictures of streams at flood stage. One of the interesting things about these pictures is that we can very, very clearly see the levees still above the flood level. Another interesting thing is that significant amounts of sediment are deposited by this muddy sediment-laden water as it does flow through this flooded region. Moving now to talk about drainage patterns. We have four main types of drainage patterns. We'll talk about each one individually. They are dendritic, rectangular, trellis, and radial. First, dendritic drainage. Dendritic drainage patterns are the most common patterns of stream systems. Dendritic patterns form in a shape that's tree-like or branching. Dendritic drainage patterns tend to form in regions that are dominated by relatively flat-lying homogeneous bedrock, where the slope of the land controls the drainage pattern that's formed. And in this picture, you can see a, a cartoon and then three images showing river systems that have dendritic drainage patterns. Moving on to rectangular drainage. Rectangular drainage forms in an area where fracture patterns control the drainage at the surface. And these cracks or fractures in the bedrock allow the streams to erode channels into those particular areas because they're already weakened by the fracturing. 
and that's what develops a rectangular drainage pattern like that seen here. Trellis drainage patterns form in regions that are dominated by alternating bands of resistant and less resistant rock layers, such as in a folded mountain belt area, something like maybe the Appalachian Mountains. So we can see in this, this cartoon up in the top right corner that there are parallel ridges running across from left to right, and that in the valleys between those ridges and coming down the slopes of the ridges, there are streams. And those streams are connected up by this one larger stream that flows through water gaps in those ridges. And finally, the radial drainage pattern. In a radial drainage pattern, streams make a radiating pattern like spokes on a wheel when you look down on map view. So you can see in the bottom right hand corner here a map of the Mount Rainier area. And if you just focus in on the blue areas, you can see that they radiate from the central high down, out, and away from that central high of Mount Rainier. Radial drainage is frequently associated with domal uplifts and with volcanic terrain. Think it's time to go ahead and review our learning targets? We described the major features produced by stream erosion. We described the types of stream valleys and how they change over time, and we discussed the four different types of drainage patterns. Think you're ready for your quiz, and I'll see you in class.